What's up everybody, Purple EDC back with another knife review. Uh, just a public service announcement. Um, you would be correct, my name on YouTube has changed. Um, I was previously doing videos exclusively for China's high-end EDC web store for both DHgate and AliExpress. But I have uh, decided to open my channel to all makes, all models, of all brands from all over the world. Majority of my content is still probably going to be Chinese knives because that's where my the majority of my interests lie. But um, nothing bad happened between me and China's High End EDC. It was just a call I had to make because they are just not putting out enough product for me to justify keeping my channel exclusive to them. So I'm not against doing videos for them. I just can't. Um, my my channel just it's not going to keep views if I'm only putting out one or two videos a year. I you know I gotta be putting out content on a more regular basis, and it, they're just you know when they do get new product it's usually not something that I'm really interested in. And uh, but who knows maybe I'll do more videos for them in the future. Only time will tell. But with that said. I do have another Chinese knife up for review today, this time from the company Maxace. Maxace has a pretty good reputation in the community already for making good quality flipper folders, mostly bearing pivot fit flipper folders and frame locks and liner locks, but today is something a little different. It's still riding on bearings, but it's a balisong. That's right. This is the new Maxace Covenant. Now, there was a little bit of storms uh, in the underground about this possibly being a uh, Bally Plus release. I don't know what is the truth of that. I do know one thing. It is branded as a Max Ace now, and I think it is definitely worth uh, worthy of the name Max Ace because this thing is above and beyond anything I have seen Bally Plus put out. The fit and finish on this knife, while not perfect, is very, very good. And I would put it up there with Microtech, Protech, Benchmade, definitely. I mean, it slays a Benchmade. I, won't, I don't even want to talk about Benchmade in this video. And that's probably what people are going to want to know right off the bat. Dude, I saw that knife, man. It's like 380 bucks. Is it worth it? Well... An item is only going to be worth what you are willing to pay for it. I was willing to pay the price for this, and I'm very, very pleased with the results. I would buy this any day over something like the Fly Father. Fly Father is a good knife, but I think this just looks better. I like the inlays. I mean, it's just to me, it's just a much classier looking knife, and I'm very, very impressed with the overall construction. Now, I guess we could go through the spec sheet. When you get the knife, you're going to get this card. Model name is the Covenant. Blade is Bowler M390. Heat treated to a 62 HRC. Handle is TC4 Titanium with carbon fiber. Overall length, 260 millimeters. Blade length, 110 millimeters, which is just about four and a quarter inches. Uh, handle length, 145 millimeters. Blade thickness, four millimeters. Overall weight, 140 grams. Manufacturer date, May of 2017. Instagram handle, Max Ace logo, logo on the back. Awesome pouch. Same pouch you see with a lot of. Uh, well, most Chinese knives now these days. But enough about the stuff that comes with it. Let's get onto the knife. Now, first thing you're going to notice, I'm sorry, but that is a beautiful blade grind. Bowler M390, amazing choice for the blade steel. Probably not the best for the tip. I'm looking at you, Sky. <laughs> sorry that happened to you, man. Big fan of your videos. And, uh... 
you know, if I wouldn't have seen your channel, I probably wouldn't even know about this knife right now. So shout out to you and thanks for uh, bringing this to the community. I think you were the first guy to even have anything to say about it. Overall fit and finish of this knife, I think, is really, really good. I mean, it, no, it's not perfect. I'll get into that in a little bit. But when you weigh it against the competition, it's really right up there with it. And in some ways, it's superior. A couple ways, it's inferior. But is it worth the 380 I think it is. When you compare it to things like the Protec Flyfather... And like the Microtech Tachyon, I mean the Microtech Tachyon 3 is like 340 bucks just for the aluminum handle version. Forget that. I'm not paying that much for that knife. No way. You know, for them to pull that out and then not do uh, titanium handles on the production model, I think that was a bullet to the foot if you ask me. But that's just me. TC4 Titanium, that is the Chinese equivalent of 6AL4V. Titanium block spacers. Titanium spring latch. Ball bearing pivot. Very, very smooth. No handle play whatsoever. Handles are dead even. Titanium 3D machine pocket clip. Amazing retention. Does not chew up your jeans. It's got a nice wide berth on there so that if you wear something like uh, salvage denim jeans with like really thick seams, you won't have a problem getting this in and out of your pocket. Zen pin construction. That is really where I think this ballast song shines because one of the things that I noticed with most Chinese ballys is that their tolerances for the Zen pins is pretty poor and you'll get some pretty extreme handle gap like that and then you'll squeeze the handle and you can feel the Zen pins shift in their pocket and a minor shift here translates into a huge gap down here you know, as you can see, the handles over here are barely moving, but that gap gets bigger and bigger. These Zen pins do not shift at all. When you squeeze the handles, you can feel that it's the handles themselves flexing and not parts shifting in their pockets. That's one thing that always bugs me about some Chinese ballys is that the tolerances, even when the materials are really, really nice, the Zen pins will shift in the pockets, and then the latch, you know, it'll be nice this way, then you'll open the knife, your handle will be like that, and then you got to squeeze the living crap out of it, Zen pins shift again, then you can latch it, but it just feels cheap. In the long run, probably nothing's going to happen. You know, you might shear a screw off from bending it back and forth a million times, but overall, it's really not going to be an issue. The other area that I was worried about with this knife, because of the Bally Plus knives that I had had, is the tolerance of the pivot. On a lot of the Chinese clones and counterfeits, the holes in the blade are way too big for either the bushings or the pivots. So... Even when you have bushings, you still have a tremendous amount of axial play because, I mean, it's just poor tolerances. I think when I measured it, I think the pivot size was 0.250. Oh, no, it was 0.187 for the pivot. Then the bushing was uh, 0.190 on the inside. 0.250 on the outside, and then when I measured the hole in the blade, it was something really ridiculous. I mean, we're talking like over 20 thousandths of an inch off. I mean, it, there was just so much slop. It was like, why did you guys even bother doing a bushing system? You aren't getting any of the benefits. But that's neither here nor there with this, because this does not suffer any of those fallbacks. The pivots on this are perfectly sized. There's no wiggle in and out. It just really, really is well done.
Now, one of the things that most people are probably going to be worried about, if you're a flipper, is one, the very thin blade grind. I mean, this goes almost op the opposite direction of what most BRS knives go, which is skinny at the choil area and then getting a fatter, heavier towards the tip. I don't really think you need that. I think as long as your handles are properly weighted and balanced, that the blade doesn't need to have all that weight at the tip. But that's just me. The balance point right about there. So it's not bad. And another test that I do to because I'm more of a beginner of flipping and one of the things that I've been trying to learn is uh, chaplains. I put the knife on my finger and just as if I was going to be doing a roll over a chaplain and I suspend it and I see if it's going to hang on to my finger or if it this handle's just going to flip up and the knife drops to the ground. It will balance on your finger. So it to me that's one of the tests that I do for a ballast song. If you think that's stupid, I'm you know, that's just how I do things. But I find that if you have a knife that will balance on your finger between, you know, between the safe handle and the blade and it'll just sit there I find that those knives are generally easier to learn chaplains and rollovers on because the knife just naturally wants to stay on your finger like that and when you have the centrifugal force it just stays there and it doesn't want to fly off your finger. You can't do that with a Chimera. When I had my Chimeras, you try balancing it on your finger between the safe handle and the, and the spine of the blade and that thing would just fall straight to the ground. It just did not have enough weight at the ass end of the handles. Now, those are block spacers, but they are titanium, so they're kind of on the light side. But, I think the thing flips really, really well. I'm not the greatest flipper in the world. As an EDC bally, if you want to carry a large bally, this thing's amazing. Absolutely amazing. I love the 3D machine pocket clip. I love the spring latch, love the inlays, how they're just raised a little bit and rounded, that fills out the grip. Bearings aren't probably everybody's first choice, I think most people would prefer a bushing system, but I actually really like the bearing system in this knife. I've had Korth knives with uh, IKBS and I've had... Uh, a Terry Gwynn Goblin that had bearings, uh, also IKBS, and so they were loose balls, and they don't feel as good as this. This really is, it's just very, very smooth, and there's no play, and I don't know why I didn't like that in those other knives, but in this, it doesn't bother me. In fact, when I'm trying, right now I'm trying to learn, learn uh, fanning, and it kind of makes it easier to do because without having any play in the handles at all and because the bearings are spaced out and are at the edge of the handles rather than right around the pivot every single movement you make when you like try and twist these handles that energy gets immediately translated into the pivot and the knife starts moving um, some people like a little bit of slop in their pivots so that not every single movement that they make is that quick to translate because some people just like their knives a little looser, some like them real tight. It's completely up to you, but I think if you're a person who doesn't like IKBS and you really, really like bushings, I think this is a pretty good in-between for you. What I really like about these inlays is that there's no gaps. There's no air gaps around there. They fit in there really nice. Some people would probably prefer them to be flush with the handle. I disagree. I like it on the belly. It gives you a little bit of something to grip onto. And because they're raised up, it kind of gives the handle a more rounded feel. Probably already said that. Apologies if I did. Now, negatives. 
Are there any? Well, just a couple. And to me, the first sharpness. Now, the thing that any knife should be, if anything, is sharp. This... Uh, I don't really... That's not... No, that's not sharp. You can tell... If, if I had to guess, I would say that they were worried more about getting the edge to look right than to actually be right, because it is a very, very straight, very, very even, but it's just not that sharp. I mean, if it was that sharp with any other knife, I wouldn't be able to do that, you know? I mean, it's going to cut you eventually, but for Bowler M390 being so hard to sharpen... I mean, this thing should not be coming home not being able to slice paper. Very minor. One swipe on a ceramic rod, though, and you'll be shaving. I guarantee it. It's just not quite there. The other thing is, I would have stonewashed the blade instead of a satin finish. Now, this satin finish looks great. It really does, but I think it would have been better if the steel for a satin finish blade, I think it would have been better if it was S35VN. Just a little bit easier to cut. And the reason why I say that is because if you look at the plunge grind, there's just the ever so slightest bit of chatter where the plunge grind just isn't a perfect sweep. It kind of is a little jagged. The other side is not really like that. And I think if they would have stonewashed this blade, you know, did a bead blast, stonewashed it, and then did their laser etched a logo, I think it would have, I think tumbling it would have just softened that grind line just a little bit. And also on the spine right here, where the grind ends can be a little sharp and so I think that would have deburred this area a little bit and made it easier on the hand when you're ricocheting but it would not take hardly any time at all to give this a nice crowned spine and make it super smooth which trust me it will be getting done but that's really the only issues that I have just that little bit of chatter, and you know what, that is such a minor nitpick. Most people, they would look at this blade and they would say, that's perfect. I'm very, very OCD, if you will. I, I will get out a magnifying loop and I will search for the most minor flaw in the world and it will eat at me until the next day when I wake up and I look at it and go, oh, that's not even nearly as bad as I thought it was. I got a neurosis, what can I tell you? Overall, though, just an amazing, amazing effort for their first battle song from Max Ace. Easily the best Chinese battle song I've ever hit, I've ever owned. And as far as what it compares to, I'll be honest with you, it compares more to a custom than it does any production battle song. You know, I would take this any day over a Benchmade. I would not buy a Tachyon 3 over this. You might notice that these pivots are a little bit different than what the prototype had showed. The prototype had like these kind of triangular shaped cuts into the pivots. And well, you see a, that a lot with the newer custom knives. I think there's a either Alpha Knife Supply or Knife Kit sells a pivot that's like that. And everybody's using them now. I'm actually glad that they went to this more basic pivot. I think it looks classier. I think it's cleaner. And I just thought the other ones were just a little too busy for that area. Much more fitting for the overall design, if you ask me. Spring latch works great. I would have probably preferred a spring that was under constant tension. It's got a little bit of slop back and forth. But, again, much better than any of the counterfeit spring latches from China. Overall, just 
just a beautiful, beautiful knife. Really smooth, real pocket friendly. I just, I can't, I can't fault it really on anything. You know, um, the issues of whether or not it's going to be a good flipper or not, I think that's going to be up to the individual. Now, I do not know if this is going to come with every single knife. I don't know if they're going to be offering it as a package outside of purchase or if it was just an introductory thing. So don't quote me on this, but when I got my first one, it did come with this accessory set. I bought two of them because I'm kind of OCD. I like to keep one nice and one not nice. So one's going to get carried, one's not. Second one did not come with it, but I do not know if they're all going to be this way. But for those guys who get this and think, oh, you know what, those block spacers, they're just a little too light, one, be thankful you got block spacers anyway in the first place. But they do make these, which are solid brass block spacers. I probably will never use these. One, I hate the way gold looks, so I'd have to antique them just to make them to where I would use them. But I like the way it flips without them. Sorry, I can't manipulate the knife in front of the camera because of the angle and everything like that. I'd probably, I'd probably kill myself. You'd see my death on YouTube. But seriously, just a beautiful, beautiful knife. Really well done grinds. Really smooth. Tight construction. Even handles with no play. Awesome spring latch, awesome inlays. I mean, really, again, the only issue I had was that little bit to the plunge grind, which, seriously, I'm, it's such a minor issue. I'm not even going to hold it against it. But I like to be absolutely honest and, you know, tell you everything that I find wrong with the knife, no matter how minor, because, you know, to some people, that might be a huge deal. Now... Yeah, 380 bucks, man. That's a lot. It's a lot for a Chinese knife, but it's easily justifiable when you think about every thing that is hard in making a bearing knife is done twice on this. You know, these holes the cutouts in the blade for the bearings they have to be perfect because if they're off to the side just a little bit or they're not perfectly flat you put bearings in there all of a sudden you got handles that aren't they're no longer uh your blade centering will be poor you know getting blades centered on a single blade or a single handle is hard enough doing two handles and making them perfect in relation to each other you really got to watch what you're doing. And when you really compare it to the competition, I mean, what other knife do you know of that's under $400 that has these features? Sure, this is made in China, but I'll tell you one thing. This absolutely takes any bare ops knife made and completely wipes its ass with it. So just because it's Chinese doesn't mean it's going to be bad. And just because something's American doesn't mean it's going to be good either. But like I said, this is, in my opinion, the way it's manufactured and the fit and finish and just the way it feels, it's very high end. It does not give me the impression of a cheap Chinese low cost knife at all. It's very much more close to, custom, to a custom knife. Now, I'm very hesitant to say this name because even in the Balisong community, it used to be respected, but it really isn't anymore. But the um, the immediate impression that I got when I held this knife was a Daryl Ralph, but a good Daryl Ralph, you know, not one of them that was done really shoddily, the, but like a good Daryl Ralph Venturi from like 10, 15 years ago. Just really good feel in the hand. I mean, it's only going to be so ergonomic given the design, but just beautiful knife. Very well executed. I can't fault it at all. 
And I would really urge anyone, I mean, if you're on the fence about it, just get it. It's worth the wait. It's worth the money. Know that a lot, uh, you know, a good probably 40 or $50 that you're going to spend is going to go towards the shipping it. Because I've been hearing most people have been getting ex expedited shipping. So if you take the shipping money out of it, it's more like a $350 knife, which really is a steal. I would put this up against anything currently being made as far as quality wise. In fact, quality wise, it's probably a little bit above average. But that's going to be my take on the Max Ace Covenant Balisong. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description below of where I bought it. So if you guys want to get the, you know, get one from the exact same seller, it'll be available to you. But uh, I don't think any counterfeits of this exist at this moment. So, and but I also haven't been seeing anybody discounting it either. So it's I would go based on the rating. I did not have a problem with the seller that I got it from. In fact, they were really, really cool, and, uh, you know, I, they were a pleasure to deal with. So I'll put their link down below, because I don't think you'll have any problems with them. But yeah, that's my take on the Max Ace Covenant. Definitely worth a look. And if you can find one used, I doubt anybody's going to be selling theirs when they get it. But uh, if you can find one for, you know, around 300 bucks used all day long man beautiful beautiful knife very well made hardware is heat treated well I've had the torque down on the screws and I loctited everything and nothing stripped out on me everything's really really solid great release from Max Ace thank you guys for checking out the video we'll catch you around on the next one